Shalom. My name is McGee, and I'm a Torah teacher with the Elect Life Ministries. And I am going to be starting, it's coming up on September, which is a great time to go back to school, right? So I am uh, going to start a new teaching series uh, on the keys to the kingdom. Now, this is something that I have studied thousands of hours, read hundreds of texts. I mean, I really have. Uh, as a primary text researcher, to understand. I want truth and I want understanding. So uh, I started to just read broadly. And I really did discover the root source, the root that we've been grafted back into, which really is the Jewish scriptures, the Jewish Torah, the understanding, the full body of understanding that Yeshua would have had in the first century. You know, farther than any King James Bibles or any Christianity, we have to keep in the context here. So I wanted to say, if you're if you're a biblically literate student of the Torah, it's not hard to figure it out that there is cycles. So the thing about Hebrew understanding, because is is it cyclical? Time in the Bible in the Torah is cyclical. It goes around and around. It's not linear. Uh, and so that's why it's written. People always wonder, is it written linear? Are things chronological? Then no, they're really, they're in a whole different thought level. Uh, things are secular. So uh, cyclical. Uh, see what I'm trying to say that right? Cyclical. So when you, like the, the, the sun and the moon and the stars, the whole point is there are definitely heavenly influences according to the different seasons that produce different results. Because look at our seasons, right? You're not going to get flowers in the winter you know, skies, that's what's coming through in the Northern Hemisphere, okay? So this is an important principle to understand, but these cycles, all right, and that's why you have the week cycle, and then you have a, a Shabbat, a rest on Saturday, and it's a commandment, just saying, uh, that th this, this is the way to really begin to start to unwind some of these time issues, but that's not what I wanted to go into. Um, but cycle, there is... It starts with Adam and Eve. It really does start with the first stories and in the garden and Adam and Eve. And, you know, they're in, they're in this place, place of bliss. It says, you know, that everything was perfect. They, they and the father had perfect communication, all the animals, they got along, everybody it was just great. You know, it was beautiful. But something happened, you know, we had the, and this is all metaphor and allegorical. And people, I would tell you, it's so deep. Believe me, this is not a kindergarten Sunday school story at all. That's it's just written that way so that you know the the adults so that the children in the room won't get freaked out by the uh, the enormity of what's really happening. So uh, let me just say there's so you start with a place of bliss. This I'm trying to give this list of progression from bliss to the absolute destruction because there is it doesn't just happen randomly or just you don't go from A to Z in a heartbeat. Okay, there is a progression. God is very just. He does things very orderly. He gives plenty of warning. He, he, it's all scripted out, really. So let's go through this list. So first you have a, you know, a blissful state. Then your sin enters in. Something upsets the apple cart. Then you begin to have oppression because things are not in order. They're not right anymore. So then you begin to, and this is all from the perspective of what, what God has told this is going to happen. When we are in, we start this downward progression, okay, into into what we do, what is called you know receiving the curses instead of an upward pro progression in your behavior, thought, and actions where you would receive blessings. So if you're in this state of bliss and you mess up and sin and then you enter into a place of, of oppression, then immediately God has systems in place that will bring judgment because you can't get away with it forever. And because we're kids, so he doesn't really want you to keep your hand on the hot stove forever, okay? And, okay? He will engineer things, and judgment comes in, and, and, and judgment is to usually just stop it, in, depending on how swift or severe the judgment is, either cut it off, uh, the behavior or the thing right away, or, you know, a pro pro progression begins. And the people, is on relation to people, and especially in the context, this is the people of God. We're, we have a relationship with him. We're supposed to. He's our father. And we're supposed to have a corporate relationship, not only individually and personally, but if this is a group thing. All right? Okay. So then you, we cry out for deliverance. You know, this is like um, the children of Israel in Egypt. 
after a couple uh, hundred years, it was like it was intolerable. They, they were not a blessing in the nation and they did not receive a blessed life in the nation. So something had really gone wrong. So they start to cry out for a deliverer. Well, deliverance and ultimately they receive a deliverer, which is very akin to our dilemma here, quote unquote, in life. But that's enough. Okay, then you receive, uh, well, first of all, I have to flip this around because in order, once you begin to get the judgments and you begin to realize like, wow, let's backtrack this thing. When did things start to go wrong? And you realize that, wow, there was a point when you stepped off the path, so to speak, and, you know, you need to repent. There's a very beautiful and deep and, and actually better way to understand the whole process of salvation for a believer, especially if you're a Christian, it's called tikkun and teshiva. You know, you teshiva, you have to repent. That's what Yeshua is saying. That's what the whole early church message, repent. Repent, okay, you've been on the wrong path. You gotta repent. But then you gotta fix it. That's what I'm gonna go into. You have to stop sinning, all right? You remember, uh, don't, you know, uh, stupidity or insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different re results. You've come into the presence of God, you wanna be a child of God, and you wanna just receive everything your Father has for you, all the blessings. So if you keep doing the wrong things and expect the blessings, it's like called insanity, all right? It's very clear and easy to understand, you know, how, and I digress, sorry. But let's get back to this. So you have repentance and then you get deliverance. It's very quick. I mean, the father is not, he just needs an acknowledgement. It's like your kid, you know, you just need to hear him acknowledge that he that he, he messed up, that it, that it really wasn't the smartest thing to do, whatever. You don't, you know, you don't want to pound the crap out of the kid. You just want an acknowledgement. That's all because that's very cognitive and that that is great progress. So that's all, you know, just we need, that's a step you cannot, you cannot skip that step. Let me tell you that. So you will stay in that cycle. And this is why, you know, this is the other thing people sometimes you feel like you're spinning your wheels. You're going around and around and the same thing. You've had the same prayer over and over year after year. You're not getting results. Well, maybe because you're not like doing the protocol, doing the step to get up, you know, to go up higher, okay? And, you know, this is why, this is why I'm going to go back to my original statement, huh? that, that, that I find all this deep understanding in the the, the text and, and, and in, in understanding the Old Testament, it was written. It's an extremely powerful and deep book, and the, and the Jews have remained the people of the book because it's of its tremendous attraction and power you know to levels that christians i'm telling you because now i'm on the other side of the fence and i know this we we never really understood we never really got it okay and it's time now to get it it's very exciting so anyways after repentance he sends the deliverer right then you have a season of peace again then you're getting back into the peace mode and then from there in the larger picture as more and more and more of the people of the earth come under the banner of god and accept his yoke his torah he said we can go into a place of rest so this is what the Sabbath rest is, the millennial, where, you know, everybody's on the page. Nobody's bucking God, you know, and he's he's present. We understand how, to, I mean, I could, and I could and I will until go on and on about this. But from there you do, you go into the Sabbath rest and it is, a, and we are promised the Sabbath rest. Um, a thousand years where everything's going to be done the way God had originally hoped it would all be done. And we're going to see what a perfect world it really will make. And after that, and then of course, there's a little bit of more drama at the end where there's much, but then we go into, and that all took seven days. Seven. Um, the seven cycle in the, in the biggest picture of it is then you go into what's called this Olam Haba. This is the hereafter. This is where it talks about revelation where there'll be no more sun or moon and everything kind of gets folded up, folded up and the kingdom of God just will shine go on forever. It's, it's this place then where there's no need for any more dualism. Everything has been completely rectified. We can all go on and we are promised an immortality. Now, not just a thousand years, but an immortality of total perfection spiritual bliss you know so we will have a perfect body <laughs> we will have a perfect heart and we will have a perfect mind and we'll live 
Right. Hey, I think like Paul says, it's still the best uh, message. It's the, still the best selling message on the planet. You got nothing to lose if it's not true, but you got plenty to gain. And people, we are in a really bad situation now. So I wanted to say again that these cycles, where are we in the cycle? Well, we are in the cycle of major judgment, people. That's what's going on. And judgment leads to, to, to the breaking down when, you know, it says that um, the peoples of the earth come into judgment and the foundations, okay, our foundations, the things that we used to take for granted, are, everything's crumbling, all right? There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of disintegration. There's a lot of, and, um, you know, and it, and it spills over. Now, there's one, there's a remedy, <laughs> okay? There's a remedy when you begin to feel judgment in your life, but nothing's working. This is on a personal level. And this is why even now on a national level, it's very important. Our country, we were on the brink of, I don't even have to, I'm not a political pundit and I'm not going to go into it, but I, I do hope everybody understands the dire straits of our economy and our border. And I mean, there's so many really serious things going on today because I do have a quote. I have many quotes. I wonder if I could find this one quickly. Um, which I can't do. Okay. But basically it says that this was the problem with Israel. You know, the kings of the earth, even the whole world, nobody really believed that Israel, that time could be taken out, that the, that the temple, that the walls of Jerusalem could be breached, that the whole thing could just crumble. Nobody, the, the, the Jews, but they didn't, obviously didn't believe it because they weren't listening to their prophets. But the world didn't believe it either because it had it was so powerful. It really was. Uh, but my point being the same thing about America. We need to understand we, we stand on a, a rickety foundation. OK, and if it sinks, we sink with it. That's just the way it is. And it can take us anywhere from hundreds of years to, you know, crawl out of that as has happened in history or, you know, whatever. We'll see. But I tend to be an optimist. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let me just go on to this because the, the, the idea of what's the best thing, in my opinion, that we can do now as the people of God to usher in to help speed because it says the, this redemption, this uh, in this process where we our deliverer comes and we enter into this time of peace again. So, this is from a uh, quotes now. I love the sages. Christian, I'm sorry if you're listening to me, which I hope you are because you are my audience, that we sort of been brainwashed, we've been talked out of the fact that some of the deepest, as the most beautiful understanding, of course, where what else would it be? A Torah, Old Testament, is in the writings of our Jewish sages, our prophets, these people. I mean, it, it's amazing. People should read Rashi. People should read. This is from Rabbi uh, Shneer Salman. Okay, now, but his point is, that, and this is the Jewish point of view, which is really very Christian. We would say be Berean. Well, it's very, where does that concept come from? It comes from here. It says every person for the sake of the rectification of his soul, right? Which is really what's it all about. And that's the same way of saying you, uh, Tikkun and Teshiva. We're here to work out our salvation. That's the New Testament. Well, okay. Our rectification of our soul must occupy himself in the study of Torah. Okay. Number one, study the word at every level of now parts. Okay. Now I have a whole playlist on this. I have, a, it's all over a line. If you put it in, you should get some good um, understanding. But this is the true exegesis for the Torah, for the Bible. You do it this way. Okay. Every verse. It, it, in bottom line, has at least a basic level meaning, a hinted at meaning. Uh, they call it the interpreted, or here it would be more like the, the ethical meaning. What's and then the last one is the secret, the so the, the, uh, I, a more hidden, which is used. And this is a level that where Yeshua taught his disciples, where you need keys to cipher it. it, it it's sort of it's not apparent at first glance. What is referring to what? See, this is a parabolic language level. This is where all allegory and parable is speaking. 
Yeshua explained it. He was teaching his disciples this level of it and how to interpret them. And then we talked about the parable of the sower and the seed. And then they came back to him and they said, well, what does it mean? Who's the sower? What's the seed? What's going on here? And he gives them the sowed level, the secret, the hidden, the more encrypted level understanding. And it doesn't mean that it's deliberately done this way, but it's, it's to do to think this way. Let me tell you, you need to have a disciplined mind. You need to have some knowledge and you need to be able to, to hold a couple of different thoughts like puzzle pieces sort of out there before they come together. You can have no premature, no shoving verses together to me. You just got to wait, learn how to wait um, as he puts it together. for you. It's very, it's a great, but the point I want to say is this secret, like, that's what's prophesied to come out in the last days. Okay, which is what we're living in. This is the knowledge of God, this level that's going to cover the earth, meaning everybody's going to get it and understand it's not going to be limited to any group of sages in Israel or, you know, only the men, women can't do it. It's going to become so simple that even the kids can understand it. Okay, that's what's prophesied. And that's really what the Ruach is really doing today and trying to get us all. And in that, it's this amazing thing called it will bring about great glory and it will bring about the reunification of all Israel, which is another whole thing. But let's get back to this because I just wanted people to really have to understand that this, the basic, the hinted, and this is all in parts interpreted in the secret, these four levels of understanding. So instead of arguing with each other, you know, let's just, it's a given. This is how it's written. So don't tell me there's only one level the literal level, the, the fundamentalist level, there's not. You know, okay, if you were any kind of a decent Jew at the time of Yeshua, you knew this, okay? And they understood what he, and he said a lot of times this level, this deep, deep secret level gets lost. So it gets lost because this is where the enemy really uh, wants to keep hidden because this is, like Paul said, I have discovered a mystery, a secret. I get it now. I see what the scriptures are saying on the deep level. This is where the, the real intel, the spiritual warfare, the, the, the prophecies are, okay? Oh, there's just too much to say on all of it. So whatever, I got all the time in the world. This is what I love to do. I want to just shout out aura to the nations. This is how I'm doing it. So anyways, um, it says that according to his ability, everyone is to grasp and understand at this level. All the different levels of Torah and knowledge are required for this complete rectification or this complete unification of our soul, the salvation of our soul. We're all saying the same thing, right? It is impossible for the soul to be completely, you know, made new and bound to its creator from which it was hewn, right? That's the, one of the analogies, uh, without this level of knowledge and understanding because you can't really work with God. Remember, he's not, you're not robots. We got to work with him. You know, we got to freely yield to him, uh, you know, something that we know we're doing wrong or whatever, and, and he'll help, he'll get, he'll show us how to get back on the path. All right. The, but one of the things that um, for our time, this is why Jewish mysticism, where we're a lot of this level, this deeper understanding has always been kept in couch and always been read and known, understood and written about and translated by, by the sages of Israel. Okay. Uh, that the, 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 there's always been, and this is something, you know, I, 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 it took me a while to understand it all because you get out there. It's like a war zone. It's like a, a mental war zone going out into Google world or trying to find them because everybody's got a spin and everybody's trying to get you to, you know, uh, see it their way, jump on their beam, their narrative. And you really have to have a level of just detachment to a certain extent until you get enough broad knowledge to, to kind of see where people are coming from different groups. I have, well, that's another whole thing, but let me just say this. Um, the redemption of Israel, and this is this is known prophecy, okay, uh, especially amongst the Jewish sages. 
It says the redemption of Israel and all the worth of Israel is dependent on the learning of the Zohar. The Zohar is the primary text of this level of understanding, which is called the secret. And this is like where God, you know, the whole thing in Daniel, the secret council of God. You know, if you're not invited to the meeting, if you're not there at that level, if you're not part of that, uh, you're never going to know what went on there. Okay. It, it, it's a secret council. It really is. And, but, but the thing is, you can enter in, but there's definitely checkpoints along the way. There's gates. That was what I think about saying, you know, you just don't waltz in. But, anyways, um, it says that for 33, the, the Jewish wisdom that is found in the Torah, and when I say Torah, I, I'm speaking, well, that has it's a word that has many levels of understanding. But in, in this way, when I speak Torah, I'm talking about the 304, 508, I think it's something like that, letters that make up the Torah or what is known as the five books of Moshe, the foundational, you know, um, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That is called, you know, okay, that's the Torah. Those are the five books that Moshe kind of, that's the collective uh, admonitions, ordinances, laws, um, experience that they had with the covenant with Mount Sinai. And of course, but then you get into the prophets and then you get into um, other kinds of writings called the wisdom literature. So it, it's, even in the Old Testament, we never really understood that there's definitely different kinds of books supposedly to be read for different levels and purposes. I mean, in the sense they have you ever, if you've never done the Parshas, one of the best ways to get into this whole understanding is to do uh, the Jewish daily, a uh, week, we well, can do it daily. I Most people I do myself, a, a weekly Parsha. They have taken the whole five books of Moshe and parsed it out into little sections so that within a year, you go through the whole five books. And let me tell you, if you're Jewish and you've done this for 70 years of your life, 60 years, 50 years, 40, you get pretty knowledgeable about the whole totality of the text. This is a great way we should do it. How That's a great way to to, to get a, the site book if it's not because I'll tell you, every time you do the Parshas, you're always going to find something new. But again, if you didn't know about the Parshas, truly uh, check them out. Uh, so what I want to say here is there's always been and in and, and one of the uh, two levels, basically, I mean, there's four levels. I just talked about PARDS, which, by the way, is an acronym. You know, the P. It's, it, if you, oh, I have so many YouTube numbers. I don't know why I'm saying this. The P-R-D-S, PARDS. It, and it means garden. It means orchard. It, it, I mean, it has some mis... And those in... Okay. Sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> too much knowledge, too much. I want to impart everything at once. I feel like I opened my mouth and a flood. Uh, I'm not trying to flood anybody out, but I am just trying to get people a little bit excited. You know, there's not much that you can get excited about in the world today. Sometimes, but you can about Torah. I'm telling you, it is unbelievable. So my point being that there are two really established thought trains in Jewish writings and understanding. You have the rational and you have the mystical. See, God is spirit. This is the, you know, the Jews have never, in all of their writing, they never forget God is spirit. And the number one, you know, the Shema prayer, which is recited foundationally every day, every morning, you know, um, Shema, uh, Shema Adonai, Adonai, Shema Israel. Hear, O Israel, Shema means here. Hear, O Israel, Adonai Elohim, the Lord our God, is one, is Ahad, is unity, is a complete unity. It's not like he's just one. He's a complete unity. So in other words, don't just, he's everywhere. We live and we move and have our being in, in the Father God and, and, and his creation and in his love for us. I mean, this is kind of, it's a very important thing to understand, to constantly keep your mind focused on him. So no matter what you're studying or what you're going through, he, his his presence his imminence his he is what he is he's a unity he is with us you know he's closer than our very breath this is quite a literal I mean it's a very literal phenomenon but that as it may 
the rational, most people don't have a problem with in the sense it's, it, it's the law that is um, the ethical understanding, the moral applications, the fundamental, the history, the archaeology, you know, all these things that, you know, the things that you can really taste and touch and write about and, and, and fact check and document, right? According to a very, even, even a secular mindset. All right. But, but there's another side to Torah. There's another whole side that has always been a little more hidden because it is a little more adult themed. I mean, this is where you take the Torah and you move up in this mystical understanding. Because again, God is spirit. So when we, a lot of the language and the understanding, uh, this is what Yeshua was saying, is found in an understanding of the kingdom of heaven. Remember, that's how the key goes. He said, he says, they are shut out from understanding the kingdom of heaven because they do not have the correct keys. Okay. Now, what he's saying, to, to understand the text on their mystical level, People, this is really so basic, and I'm just going to say this, because I'm going to say something here. Maybe I'm going to just chop this little piece out. I have something to say to the leaders, and especially the early leaders of the Hebrew Roots Movement. I mean, I don't know how it got in there, this, 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 this spirit, all right, that came in that denied this whole mystical level of Torah. And somehow started teaching and saying and getting the upper hand in people's minds and understanding that the Zohar and Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism, others, was wrong and bad and evil and wicked. And, ooh, don't go there. And we're not supposed to read that. I mean, that's like, I mean, I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> it's just, to this day, it missed it. But it has to go back to the teachers. Because I will tell you, he judges the, the, the prophets, the teachers, and the leaders above everybody first. Okay, um, you know, I have all these, this is a terrible way for me to do this because I'm a little more off the cuff, but I have these, you know, like to give you the verses. I know people like to hear. Uh, here, okay, this is it. Listen, I'm saying how the kings of the earth, this is from Lamentations, Lamentations chapter four, verse 12. The kings of the earth did not believe nor all the inhabitants of the world, that a foe or an enemy could enter the gates of Jerusalem. I mean, that's how powerful, see, this is why they lie to us, always, 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 you know, that nobody cared about the temple in Jerusalem. But if they didn't care about it, you know, what, why destroy it? Why, why, and why destroy it in such a, in a brutal, barbaric, and, and, and down to the last stone level, okay, that was way beyond what was necessary. Um, but it become, but it happened, and why? Now, Rashi is, you know, this is from Rashi, who is really the main and most basic commentator of all Jewish Old Testament Torah. He needs great. Everybody should read Rashi. And, you know, like reading Matthew Henry commentary, all right? These are study aids. Don't have an attitude. <laughs> it was for the sins of her prophets, the iniquities of the priests. This is why Israel's coming, why these, they were able, they got to the place of judgment, they got to the place of complete of destruction. Because within another list I wanted to give you of this whole concept of, of you know, going from bliss to sin to oppression, to judgment, to, de to de repentance, to deliverance, back to peace. Another way of saying it, I do like to, you know, it's good to hear things in different ways. But this is, you know, first it starts with moral corruptness, right? And then it goes into oppression. Like I said, and remember it says, if, if the foundations crumble, right, the righteous become oppressed. There, then you go into destruction. Then you go into captivity. Then you go into want or need. It says, or famine or, a, a, you know, a lack of all blessings. And then you go into the sixth, which is complete turmoil, complete chaos, all the foundations are chaotic and broken apart. I mean, we see this, look at the French Revolution, there are some really great examples of this, you know, besides the destruction of Jerusalem, you've got major, you know, the destruction of Rome, when it got segment. Then you have, after the trouble, you have desolation. If it's time, look what happened to Egypt, look what happened to Babylon, they all got judged, you know, if it comes down, when it finally comes down to your time and your ultimate judgment, you know, you're not going to stand against the court of Yahweh, it's just not going to happen. But if, if if my people, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, right, and confess their sins 
and change from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will rain down a blessing. I mean, is that not exactly? That's the whole testament understanding. That's the progression. So we do need to, to get into uh, Torah. And I'm telling you today, Christian, this is, the, this is the final message I have. It's not just reading a little 15-minute devotional in of a Christian devotional book. Okay. My husband and I, we were together in a Christian bookstore for 25 years. You know, and I know how superficial I was once, you know, I don't know what I am now per se, except an Israelite soul waiting for Mashiach. <laughs> right. But uh I was the best evangelical Christian and I, I knew what everybody was reading and is it but we had no clue. I'm telling you people, no clue to the depth that was really there for us if we would just have not been so uh, what would be programmed to be anti-Jewish, you know, in, in terms of not really believing in, in anything that could come out of that house of Judah writings, okay? And today, that's why the Hebrew roots, when people start going back, it, it's it's just a time of because it's like, oh my gosh, I never knew that. Nobody ever told me that. I never saw that. It's, so the, that the excitement and the discovery is, is quite... Um, intoxicating actually that's what i think there's a verse in the new testament about that so anyways uh that's really what i wanted to say but what i wanted to say if i didn't say it in the beginning i want to i'm starting a class in september actually september 16th 9 a.m eastern standard time and i'm going to teach on the keys to the kingdom i'm going to teach christians now christian i'll start the christian if you want to know where you are in the Bible, you're called ephraim you're called the house of ephraim you now have all these teachings of this. You will get the house of Joseph. You're the northern kingdom. By and large, the, the bulk of the offspring from the northern kingdom that was divorced and sent into the nations 3,300 years ago. I believe it was 2,500 years ago. Okay? Like Paul multiplied and, and just was in all the earth and moving around and just... And that is the seed, the seed, because he was faithful. He said he would call them back. He would bring them back. This is very deep. It's beautiful. It's very insightful. But uh, this is why you come, you don't come back to Christianity again. That's not, you know, that's not the root we were grafted into. Jesus was not a Christian. Yeshua was a was a was an Essene. Like bottom line, he was an Essene. He was the most brilliant Torah sage mind of his generation. That's why, you know, he didn't escape too many people's notice. Okay. So there's a lot there. So I'm going to start this class where we're going to stack it from the point of view of the keys because there's certain established. Paul said the foundation has already been laid. You don't need to make it up. Okay. We just need to go and find out what the foundation is. And it, it, it's very exciting. And I'm going to have... So the, the true to our class, the, the electlife.org, we have done the heavy lifting. There are um, all the scripture verses to completely support what I'm teaching. There are graphics and charts and study aids and videos that you can, you know, blogs, uh, you know, uh, what it podcasts, whatever format works for your lifestyle. The point is, let's get wisdom. Let's get understanding. Let's um, get oil in our lamp. Same, same thing. That's a key. So I go, and, and let's do this thing. Okay. So come into this class live stream free. If you want to kind of join the ministry, we do have sort of a membership thing going here where I can release some really deep things uh, that um, especially having Jermaine to today. So join us. Uh, and and come on, have great joy in the journey. I believe that the message of the Baal Shem Tov, a great charismatic uh, leader of the Jewish community in Europe in, in, I think it was the 16, oh gosh, I'm so bad, maybe 17 or something. But, you know, he brought back this level did, that even though it looks pretty bleak, we can have this insane, intense inner joy on this journey. And that's what we got to fight for and not let them take away. So that's what the um, oil will produce. It'll make you shine. Uh, so on that note, I'll see you in the next video. Shalom, shalom.